Good morning, church family. Welcome to the first Sunday of World Outreach Week, and we're happy to have the Powells with us today. We look forward to hearing more from them later. Um, the first song we're going to start with is like a good opener for World Outreach Week. Um, it was a song requested by the missions team, so we were happy to learn that and bring it to you today. It's called He Reigns. Um, the words of this song really capture with word pictures um, the theme of reaching others with the gospel of Christ. So we invite you to stand um, and join us in singing if you know it and learning it as you go and singing with us as we sing He Reigns. to start our service today. Um, like I said, we are launching our World Outreach Week, and so that starts today with the Powells being here with us. And then on Saturday, there's going to be a desserts from around the world. That will be a time to hear from a local missionary, Steve Wilberly, 
um, who has written a book and he has much to tell you. So we hope you can join for that. Um, but also, we're looking for desserts from around the world. So if you could participate in bringing something, uh, there's sign-up sheets on the table in the narthex, or you can let me know and I'll pass that along to Dan and the team. Um, and then also just our outreach, our community outreach called Caring Continues. We are looking for cereal and mac and cheese for the month of October. So we're really going to just make it a push for the next couple of Sundays. And you can place those items in the coat room um, down the hall and to your left there in the narthex. Um, and then at the end of the month, we have another community outreach, our trunk or treat. And we're still looking for trunks decorated with candy to pass out. Um, you can let me know, sign up online, or see the Coddingtons about that. Um, and if you can just donate candy, we used a lot of candy last year, so you can put that in the basket in the lobby. And I promise I'm not eating it. I'm putting it in a safe place. All right, um, let's continue our worship, and we're going to sing a song called Holy Forever. And I just um, pray that this message touches your heart in a special way today. I'll sing together. the greatest
morning. Jesus paid it all, not just for us, but the whole world. Amazing as that is, I don't know how we could do it, but he did it, and we're so grateful. Amen. Um, one of our missionaries, uh, Michelle Barlow, I was going to say Michelle Norman. Michelle uh, Barlow wrote a book recently. She works in Niger. She's a doctor, like me, same specialty. Uh, but she wrote this book uh, called Michelle Goes to Africa. And um, she has a little message for us. Uh, um, and I wanted to let you know that this little book we're going to make available to all the families of, with children. So any families that have kids uh, less than, let's say, 14, equal to or less than 14, uh, are going to be able to come up and get a book in a minute. Uh, but we want to hear from Michelle. She, want, she sent a special message for us from Niger, where she's working. And right now, they just had a coup d'etat uh, recently in Niger. Uh, and uh, she works among the Fulani and the Tamachic people and the Hausa people in uh, a very harsh environment. There's a, a, a big malaria outbreak right now, so she's a very busy doctor. So, but she's working as part of a team to, to reach uh, this uh, difficult and difficult land. So if we can uh, uh, run her message, um, she's got something to, to share with us. This is the part where you return their greeting and tell me that you rose well, which is what I asked. I hope you're doing well. Happy October. It's amazing how time flies. And hopefully there's some sunshine and beautiful leaves uh, and some cooler weather there right now. Did you pass any camels on the way to church today or find a scorpion in your bathtub? Because that's how my day started, which was very exciting. Um, but now I'm back at work and it's malaria season as so the hospital is quite busy right now um yeah it's it's a bit tiring but uh, lots lots of opportunities to really see god at work and how he brings healing and comfort to people and how he is able to use us as his body of christ here on earth um ministering and reaching into the lives of people who have never heard about him before so it's exciting to be able to be a part of that, um, even though it's crazy sometimes. And I just wanted to show you this. Bear with me, I'm gonna walk a little bit. Now right next to the maternity ward, we're gonna go towards the surgical ward. But on days that feel really long, I sometimes come over here to, let me see if I'm gonna, this is my, one of my favorite trees. Just reminds me every day how God can take care of all the big things and the little things, no matter, how, no matter how crazy life gets. Praying you have a wonderful day and weekend learning and celebrating and, and enjoying some fellowship. God bless. You know, in Michelle's book, uh, she does talk about the weaver bird nests that, uh, uh, that's part of her story. So it's a great story for kids. So. Um, We've got, uh, so we want kids to come up from families, uh, if, if there's any in the audience here, to get their book. If not, if they're not here today on video, then, uh, hey, come on up. Yay. <laughs> so one book per family, and you guys can share these. Your mom and dad can read them to you, and, or you can read them yourselves. Some of the older ones, right? <laughs> There's a story about Michelle who, uh, she was uh, brought up in a, as a missionary kid uh, early on in her life uh, when her father was a, a doctor in Uganda and um, how she remembers these little weaver bird nests and how that was a, a sign of God's faithfulness and how she reached out um, to, do, to follow in his stead to, to be a missionary with SIM. 
So if there's any other families that are, weren't here uh, today, we've got some in the, we'll have some at the, uh, at the church office. Or talk, talk to one of us, uh, uh, either Terry or myself, uh, or anybody on the missions team. So, great. Thanks. Happy reading. Um, wanted to mention a few things about the World Outreach Week. We have printed these uh, missionary uh, flyers here, which has updates, uh, most recent updates from our, all of our missionaries on there. So you can use this uh, throughout the year to pray for missionaries. Maybe pick one a day, if you will, and go through it and keep, keep going through it over and again. Um, so we'd appreciate that. I also wanted to let you know that on Saturday uh, we're having um, Steve Wiberly uh, uh, share from, from his experiences how he was called out from this very area of Connecticut over in Canterbury, grew up on a farm, uh, did a lot of adventures in Alaska and then, and then ended up in uh, a country in Middle East, which I can't name, and spent decades there uh, planting fellowships. And uh, so we're going to hear from him next, uh, well, this Saturday, and then he'll be here at, uh, sharing a message uh, uh, Sunday as well. So there's, I think, six people out that signed up for desserts, desserts from around the world. So just pick a country and pick a dessert and make it and bring it. But sign up for it if you would. Uh, look forward to that. So that'll be nice. Um, and um, we also, we collect a faith promise every year, as you, as you might recall. This, this, these cards are in your pew racks. Uh, next week, we'll collect these, and uh, so you might be thinking and praying about what the Lord's put on your heart to maybe increase uh, your gener generosity toward world right outreach for Christ. So all these, you know, emissaries that we, we send and we support and we get behind and we pray for uh, need your help and support. So just keep that in mind. So let's go to the word, uh, to the Lord in, in prayer and... Uh, Oh, Lord God Almighty, we just thank you so much for your, your deep and abiding love and uh, uh, how much you've uh, shown yourself to us, um, how much you paid the price uh, for our redemption, and how you, that purchase price uh, was not just for us or our people, but for every tribe, tongue, and nation around the world that you came to redeem. So we thank you for that, Lord. God, we worship you as the center of our hearts. Uh, both in the center of our hearts and to the ends of the earth. And we acknowledge you not as God, as a God, but as the God of all the nations. And we thank you that you've chosen a people for your namesake out of all the nations of the earth. You chose Israel to be your treasured possession and through whom the righteous king would, would, would arise, uh, whom we worship and who will be worshiped throughout the world. And that's happening. And now, Lord, as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as the God of Judah and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, Son, the Messiah. We pray for your peace and for your justice in the land of Israel and Palestine right now. Our hearts break and uh, the violence. We pray that you may allow the hostilities to be tempered and your people to be preserved, to be witness of your grace and your love in the land. We pray especially for Max and Tetiana. Um, that they may have newfound opportunities uh, to minister to the hurting people, the people that are in fear, uh, to help uh, the Israelis, um, uh, that they would trust in you, the Prince of Peace, uh, that was announced to the shepherds so long ago. And you also may protect their son, who's been called up uh, to the IDF, to, to, to the front lines with his young family. We just pray, Father, for his protection and for that grace and his peace to be upon you. Father, we also pray for the hostilities in Ukraine to cease as you know, as you show yourself to be strong through your people and through the love that is shared in that land, you know, that broken land, Father. We ask you to strengthen our missionaries serving in Eastern Europe, Paul and Sue Johnson in Bulgaria and Poland and Rachel Budd in the Czech Republic. We pray your hand a blessing upon that part of the world. Father, we pray also for the Sahel, a uh, very tumultuous part of the world, the center part of Africa, Amid conflict and a, this recent coup in Niger, uh, uh, disease and poverty and violent extremism, we just pray, Father, that your hand of blessing would be in that land, that uh, candles would be lit in the darkness, that the Fulani would experience your grace and love and the fullness of who Jesus is, that the Tamachic also, their nomadic people, uh, Father, that we've taken on, that we would pray for them and that they would find new um, 
movements to Christ among them. We pray for our missionaries, Eli and Kadama, and, and for Michelle as well, Father, in that difficult land. We pray for uh, Borima and uh, for the Norans and um, all those, Lord, that you've sent out, uh, that they would be examples of your grace and love, Father. We pray also for our families here locally, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would uh, raise up these children who read the story of Michelle and, and, uh, and hear of your word uh, through all the ministries of the, the children to the church. Father, we just pray your hand a blessing upon them in the future. They are the future, and we pray that they would uh, sense your presence and uh, not despair and, and uh, to be driven um, by your love and to uh, follow after your ways. We pray a special hand, like Lord, on those who are suffering and those who are afflicted. We pray a special hand of blessing upon Jane Norman, and uh, as she is hospitalized, I pray, Father, that the, she would be strengthened, uh, that she would stand tall, and that uh, her family would uh, be able to minister her. We, uh, thank you for Roy on the missions team that's uh, been able to minister to her even today. We pray also, Lord, for Scott. Uh, um, who uh, felt a little faint earlier uh, this morning, we just pray your hand of blessing upon him as he shares with us from your word. Lord, may your name be praised and honored among the nations. May your name be praised in our hearts, in our families, in our community, in our church. And we ask this all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we have a, hearing, a reading from the word of God today in preparation for uh, Scott sharing this morning. It comes from Psalm 96. Psalm 96, I'll read uh, verses 1 through 10, and it goes like this. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the earth. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. We welcome Scott and Leslie Powell to us uh, from Send International. They, work in, uh, they worked in Asia for many years uh, with Send in Taiwan among the Hakka people for many years. And then um, we're called back about 12 years ago, I think, to, to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where they told us stories this morning at, at the SALT class of amazing ways that God is drawing uh, the nations to that area, Mef refugees, immigrants, uh, many Muslims uh, that they've come to open up uh, the doors to their hearts uh, uh, in that area. So welcome, uh, Scott. Uh, look forward to hearing what you have to share with us today. Well, good morning. I love the theme of this week here at Woodstock, glory among the nations. And that sums up uh, really what our hearts are all about, doesn't it? As we raise the glory of the living God among all peoples, that is the pursuit of all of us in the Church of Jesus Christ today. And it's a great work of global missions as we send people around the world as well. Raising Jesus followers is what Christ has called us to do. Worshiping followers of him among all peoples of our world. And as we served in Taiwan for a number of years, it was starting small fellowships in churches. And I remember the first early days, there were three believers and I would labor 20 hours a week to prepare the Bible lesson for that Sunday to be able to communicate uh, God's word to them. Yeah, small fellowships, and that's often what the church is, where it is being raised up among some pretty un, 
receptive areas of our world. Uh, thinking of Michelle in that land of Niger and other places like that. Uh, God is raising up those who will declare his glory in those places. And that's what we want to see, a fellowship of God's people that are doing that. And we're well aware today, as you are, that this is being shouldered now, not so much by those of us from this country or even Europe, as it is from all the church of God around the world. And it is the vision of God that his whole church, the whole body of Christ, would take the whole gospel in its fullness to the whole world, all nations of our world today. And we're seeing God uh, and his people penetrating some of those frontiers that are very difficult in our world today. We'll talk about that a little bit more maybe later this morning. As we think about this theme of glory among the nations, that's what it is, raising the great name of our God among people that don't really know him. And you say, well, you're working with Muslim people. Don't they know God? They certainly have God on their lips. And yes, as we go into homes, the greeting at the door is assalamu alaikum, and they return the greeting, wa alaikum salam. Yes, uh, peace from God. You talk about something that's happened good, and that, oh, it's thanks be to God. You ask them if they're going to be there later this week that you can make an appointment. Well, inshallah, if God wills. God is in every sentence, in every phrase almost, but their idea of God is a bit different from the God that has revealed himself to us in his word, isn't it? And it's at that point that we have the blessing and the privilege and the duty to be able to share with them the glory of this God that we worship and serve. So yes, Jesus clarified our commission is to make disciples of all peoples, all nations. And we do that as we share his glory among all peoples. As we read this morning in Psalm 96, we're told in verse 3 that we're to declare three things in this chapter. Th declare the glory of God among all nations. Declare his marvelous deeds or his mighty works among all peoples. And then in verse 10, one more thing we're to declare. Did you get that? Say among the nations, declare what? The Lord reigns. Not sure who selected the great worship songs this morning, but it just sets the tone in our hearts, doesn't it, for this great passage of the word of God, the Lord reigns. Well, let's think about that this morning. Um, number one here, as we mentioned, is declaring God's glory among the nations, different peoples of our world today. We certainly don't have any lack of influencers in our society, do we? The voices abound. And if you're on podcasts, if you're uh, picking up tweets here and there, you're seeing constant messages coming our way. People are declaring all kinds of opinions, all kinds of ideas and positions. And it's in this mix that God calls us as his people to not step back, but to declare his glory among all peoples in the social intercourse of our day to be declaring his glory and telling people about this God who is glorious in all his ways. So he calls us to this as we ascribe to him the glory that he is due. Ascribe to him the glory that he is due. Think about that. We owe God something, don't we? He is due glory not just from our mouths, but from the mouths of all his created people, uh, cre human creation that whole, as a whole. Well, let me ask you this. What is the glory of God that we're supposed to declare? Have you thought about that? I've pondered this at different points because it's a prominent theme in the Psalms and in the Word of God, God's glory. Wow, well, yeah, God is, he's greater than anything. And I guess that's where my uh, understanding of the glory of God kind of ended. 
John Piper is helpful on this point. He has said that the glory of God is the infinite beauty and greatness of God's manifold perfections. Now, that may come across a little deep to some of us, but we talk about God's perfections as all that uh, characterizes him, his holiness, his righteousness, yes, his justice, his love and his faithfulness, all that is encompassed in the perfections of God, manifold perfections. And it is as uh, he says, the glory of God is the infinite beauty and greatness of God in all that he is. He's tied that into his holiness, and we sang about the holiness of God this morning, didn't we? The holiness of God is all that sets him separate, apart from and above everything else that we know. All of us, all of the creation that we move among, God is high above and beyond all that in his greatness and in his infinite beauty. And that is the glory of God that we want to declare among the nations. And that God is a bit different from Allah that many of our friends are putting their mats down and praying to as we visit in their homes. They go through a ritual, but they're afraid of this Allah. And you ask them, what's going to come as you get to the end of life and, and are moving into you know, the next thing? And they say, well, you know, there's one angel on my right shoulder and another angel on my left. And my good things are on the right shoulder. My not so good things are on the left. And they're counting up. And when I get to the end, whichever outbalances the other, I hope God will, you know, Allah will let me in on that basis. That's their assurance. And as far as it goes in this life, folks, we have hopeless people all around us. And we have the blessing and the privilege to declare God's glory. There's a God who's faithful, and he said, if you confess your sin, I am faithful, I am just. There's the glory of God to forgive and to give you the hope of eternity with me. We've taken some of our Muslim friends to that verse, and that generates some thinking on their part. Faithful. I never thought of Allah as being faithful, the glory of God, and it's ours to declare as he gives us that opportunity. We're told that this God, the Lord of hosts, is the king of glory. King of glory. We know that the earth is full of his glory, as Isaiah found, Isaiah 6, when he saw that great image of the holiness of God and the earth is full of his glory. As you and I bear light of Christ among our friends, our colleagues, the circles we move in day by day, we share a glimmer of God's glory that fills the earth, both in his creation, as beautiful as that is, and in his human creation, people. And we are his redeemed creation sharing glimmers of the glory of God where he takes us. One day when everything's restored, in that great coming day, Isaiah 11, 9 tells us the earth will be filled with the knowledge of what? The glory of God as the waters cover the sea. How do the waters cover the sea? <laughs> well, to a depth of five or six miles in the deepest point, the waters cover the sea. How deeply is God's glory etched around us in our world? And in that day, it says that his knowledge is going, the knowledge of his glory is going to fill this earth as the waters cover the sea till every last person acknowledges that. I think often, and we pray uh, Paul's words in uh, the Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. He's praying there. He says, God who said, let light shine out, of, shine out of darkness, has shown into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God 
And where is that glory found? In the face of Jesus Christ. Only in him do we see the fullness of the glory of God. And this is a prayer that we have prayed many times as we're going into homes of our Muslim friends. We'd invite you to pray for your friends and, and ours as well. Oh God, would you shine into their hearts, enlighten their minds with the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ as we set him before them, that they would acknowledge him as the king of glory. Yes, we have the blessed privilege of declaring the glory of God among the nations. And we're all here to do that as we strive together. Paul says, standing together firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, advancing God's kingdom where he takes us in this world. You know, many of us have different opinions and churches in America certainly are divided over many issues today, don't let our differences at that level mar the glory of God as he wants to show it through us as we advance his kingdom together uh, in the places where he, he takes us. But we're also told that we are to declare not just his glory, but his marvelous works among all peoples. The great deeds of God among all peoples. What are his marvelous works that we declare among the nations. Well, through a lot of the history of God's people, there was one great event that people looked back to and they would rehearse and they would tell their children about it and they would tell their grandchildren and it went on generation by generation. Who is our God? It's a God that did this. Do you remember what that was? It was a God who confronted a resistant pagan king, Pharaoh, and rescued his people out from under his hand across the Red Sea and shepherded them into their promised inheritance in the promised land. And for generation after generation, even to this day, our Jewish friends look back at that as a marvelous work of God that they don't want to ever forget. They don't want their children and grandchildren to ever forget. And they retell that story as they declare the marvelous works of God. Well, then came the day that Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was buried. The tomb was sealed. And then the third day, what happened? Whoa, blew it open. And Jesus is risen from the dead by the power of God. And there is a marvelous work that trumps any other mark of uh, uh, work in history, doesn't it? And as we look at Jesus among all the religious leaders of our world and we talk to friends from different walks and different faiths, what sets him apart over all others, folks? It's the marvelous work of God in raising his son from the dead. That is a work we need to be declaring. That is the king of glory, uh, risen from the dead. We declare the marvelous work of our God, and we can't forget that. But it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Into the work of God in real time that we declare as well. And as we see God's hand at work, and we can help our friends say, wow, there was a mark of God's hand. And we have seen God do some pretty amazing things, even in the last year, as we Think about the marvelous works of God that we have to declare. He has, he has given us the opportunity to treasure life when life is often trivialized in our culture. Leslie told the story earlier today uh, of a woman that within the last year found herself pregnant and it wasn't convenient. She's Muslim, Muslims are very careful in preserving life by their faith, but she was prepared to get rid of this baby. And Leslie prayed with her. She got as far as the appointment at the Planned Parenthood. She was taken in for a consultation. She, they told her to go sit outside for a little bit and we'll call you in 
And while she sat there, God moved in answer to a lot of prayer. She got up, canceled the appointment, and walked out. And that little baby was born on July 11th. Tr precious little girl named Eliana, God who hears. Who could guess that a Muslim couple would name their daughter the God who hears? Preserve the life. That's the work of God. We've seen God work even before we are, have an opportunity to meet people in preparing their hearts even in a Muslim situation in the Middle East, to be receptive. Father that just arrived in the last month with his six children, his wife and six children, living in Lancaster. And as he got here, even before they were in their home, he was talking to another Arabic speaker, translator. And the young lady in the family, high schooler, asked, do I have to wear this hijab to school here in America? She very wisely said, well, you're in a free country, but you better talk to your father about that. <laughs> Fathers make those decisions. Well, he overheard this. He came over to our friend and he said, I am so tired of the oppressive faith that I have been living under. He says, I've been trying to seek another way for six years. He said, that could be dangerous where I came from, but I'm in a free country now. No, he said to his daughter, you don't need to wear that anymore. He says, we are here in a free nation now. And he asked this translator about her story. She had come very similar situation out of another country in the Middle East, seven, eight, nine years before. She came with her two daughters and she was on the street and met one of our friends that speaks Arabic. And she had been questioning for six years her faith. And her relatives said, don't ask those questions. That could be dangerous here. She had come to Christ, and she related to this husband as he was talking to her, her story. He says, that's what I want. She said, well, tomorrow there's a big meeting if you want to come. So he and his high school son showed up the next day to a big tent meeting out in the country where we were meeting that day. And he saw things he had never seen before. At the end of it, two middle schoolers one out of Central Asia with his parents, were baptized. What's that all about, he asked. And a brother who speaks Arabic was explaining to him, Jesus has saved them. They are making a commitment to follow him all their days. That's what I want, he says. First month in America, and here's a Muslim father saying, this is what I want. He's had his whole family in the Hayat Fellowship the last two or three weeks seeking truth, reading the Arabic on a Bible on his phone. There is the marvelous work of God, people. He is at work in hearts even before we encounter people, and even in the most difficult places of our world today. Let's give him glory as the king of glory who is the marvelous works among the nations. One more marvelous work we'll share um, because I think it's really pretty exciting. I've mentioned earlier that we, in our fellowship of Muslim background believers that's come together almost three years now, that we're at every Sunday when we're in Lancaster, there are three couples. Three young men came here out of Central Asia, some of them seven, eight, nine years ago. Uh, there was a person there that connected them to come here to further their studies. Uh, IT work, uh, they trained them in some of that, very basic skills, and they came here to continue that. Uh, financial services, some of that. And so these three men came. They ended up finding Christ here in different ways. They're all out of a Uzbek background. That's their people group. Very few believers among that people uh, in the homeland. And yet they came here, they found Christ. They began to share with other friends. They each had wives that came to Christ. They were married. Now they're raising children here as Christian couples in this area, of the eastern part of the country. And every week they're there in our fellowship together. It's gotten to where there are now six or seven believers back in their hometown because of their witness to relatives and to friends there. One of the young men has the call of God on his life. He just finished his financial services uh, degree, and he says, pray for us. He says, by next March or April, we're going to be moving back. 
you're going to uproot here after you've gotten here. Yes, we have to move back. God is calling us to shepherd that group back there. Wow. Brings tears to my eyes. All it takes to move a family to this country and you're going to move back. That's the power of the marvelous work of God in our world today, people. And it's not us just answering a call. It's these young believers hearing the call of God and saying, I must go. I must go. God is using all of the church to carry all of the gospel to every nation on earth. And we have the blessed privilege to be praying and being part of that as we send. And this church has had a long tradition in that. And we're very grateful for the 27 years that we've had a partnership with you in the work that uh, God has called us to do. Let's declare his marvelous works, transforming lives and uh, raising up people for his name in every place. Finally, we're told here that we're to declare among the nations what? The Lord reigns. Do you believe that today? Every one of us says, yes, the Lord reigns. We just sang the song this morning. The Lord reigns. And how that lifts our hearts, doesn't it? But the last week or so, I ponder that question sometimes. The Lord reigns, really? Really? What about Gaza? What about, I mean, Ukraine? What about the things that are happening in our world today? Evil on the move in ways that, honestly, I have never seen in my lifetime. The depravity that is behind some of these things. And you're saying the Lord reigns? Well, we have to confess that uh, sometimes we say, really? How can we confidently affirm, not just to ourselves, but among others today, others of our colleagues and neighbors, that God reigns? Isn't evil advancing in our world? As believers, aren't we feeling more and more marginalized in our society at points? Yes, these are realities. Where's the sovereign power? Where's the authority of the living God who reigns? When we find these things happening around us and we watch the news and we see these events in our world. Well, first, I think this is good to ponder. And I want to say, number one, that we affirm the truth of God's sovereign rule in our world, not on the basis primarily of what we observe, but on the foundation of what? The word and what he has said about himself. That word will never change. That word is sealed forever, he's told us. And when he says, I reign, we say, yes, the Lord reigns no matter what happens, what we see, and what we encounter. First and foremost, we trust the word of a God who cannot lie. But we also want to affirm the truth of God's rule as we review the history of our world. And as we look back in history, there have been very dark times for the people of God. Times of deep persecution, times of martyrdom, times when very evil things have befallen many people in our world. And yet through that, when evil is at its worst, uh, opposed to God's purposes, we see God ultimately, ultimately accomplishing what he is about and advancing the witness of Jesus Christ and the Church of Christ even in some of those places where it's been very difficult. We've served among the Chinese uh, a good part of our lives, and we've had the opportunity to go into China at different points. And I remember one of the, uh, 1998 actually, we were doing a tour with a group of believers. Uh, it was a different tour than they usually have coming into China. But we met in our final day or two there at a hotel in Beijing, Pastor Xie, he was elderly, he walked with a bit of a uh, st uh, stoop, and his wife came with him. 
he gave each of us on a lanyard a wooden cross, carved cross. He said, I want you to each take this. And then he began to share with us his story. When the communist regime took over China in the early 50s, he was a young pastor in his late teens, about 20 years of age, just married in Shanghai, the big city on the coast of China. Well, the communist regime told them, this is what you'll preach, this is, not what, this is what you won't preach. But in faithfulness to the word of God, he, with several others, continued to preach the gospel. Well, that was okay for a couple years, but eventually he was uh, arrested. He was shipped off to far west China, Qinghai is the area, up against Tibet. And for there, for the next 20 years, every day he would be out in a quarry, chipping rocks and uh, given very meager food to eat. That was the price for preaching the gospel. We say evil, yes, evil. And he finally, in I think it was the early 70s, mid 70s, was released to go back to Shanghai. 20 years he's been away. For the first time he met his son at 21 years old. Wow. Sacrifice. He said, take this cross and wear it well. I have that in my drawer. I take it out now and then and look at that. What are we commanded to do? Take up your cross and follow me. Boy, there's the example, isn't it? In these elderly believers that have paid that price for their faith. Yes, there's been evil, folks, in many dimensions in our world. And yet you look at the church in China today, one of the most uh, passionate churches of any to take the gospel even beyond their own borders as they have opportunity. God continues to advance his purposes even against the hosts of evil. And Jesus, of course, gave us his promise. I will build my church and the gates of hell itself will not withstand the advance of my church. And we see that throughout history. Does God reign? Well, sometimes it doesn't look like it in our situation. But yes, we can step back and say, absolutely, the Lord reigns. And we want to declare to all the world the reign of our living, loving God today. We can look at many places in our world. And we... Uh, want to declare this reign of our God. Certainly the church is on the go and growing in many areas. We declare his kingdom rule as he advances his kingdom, not bringing whole nations many times to faith, but it's the individual hearts of people that he is rescuing out of sin, out of their many wayward ways to bring them to Christ. And that's where the kingdom of God is advancing in the lives of people today, even where opposition is the strongest. We can look at the place that the church is growing more than any other place today. Do you know where that is? I'm sure you've probably heard. The church in Iran growing more quickly than any other place on earth. You say Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran? Yes, the most oppressive government, anti-Christian government perhaps in the world. And yet there, God is raising up primarily many women leaders, and they are huddled in groups, in apartments, and that is where God is bringing others. Why? Because it's easy to believe there? No. Oh, we've heard some horrific stories how believers have been arrested, imprisoned, tortured in incredible ways for their faith to the point that some have died one case, the body of a, a brother, he died because they cut him so much that he lost too much blood. They hung him on a crane in the city there to, as a display and said, he brought this on himself. And you know, people all walking by said, we know what happened. And they started to seek out the cousin or the friend at work that they had seen pray and 
ask them for more information. And that is how God is drawing people into the church in the country of Iran, seeing the horrificness of evil around them and saying, we still believe there's a God who reigns and we want to know him and his son, Jesus Christ. Folks, God is moving. He reigns. But it's a terrible price that many of our brothers and sisters are praying in faithfulness, are playing in uh, faithfulness to him today, and we need to pray for them. I mentioned that uh, uh, even in Central Asia, one of the most tough places, uh, most Islamic places on earth, yet there is a group now of believers that have come together uh, owning the name of Jesus. Even there, the Lord reigns, and he is advancing his kingdom. The psalmist Asaph reminds us in Psalm 76, verse 10, Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. That's a great assurance to our hearts, isn't it, when we see the wrath of man being unleashed in terrible ways around our world and in our own lives and society today. He reigns. He can make even the wrath of man to turn to his praise. And he is doing that in many places today. Our God reigns even when evil seems to prevail. And for a time, the enemy be, may be given space to do his dirty work. And yet, ultimately, we see that God is a, in, uh, bringing his, his army to bear. And we can trust his word that there is a day coming when the king of glory in all his glory, will reign on this earth and bring in his kingdom. And we are anticipating that day. This is to the glory of God among all nations. And that is the one that we want to declare. Declare the glory of God. Declare the mighty works of God. And yes, even in tough places and at tough times, declare the Lord reigns. Gloria among the nations. That's our theme today. And God calls us all to declare his sovereign, supreme glory, his unmatched works, his sovereign rule over all his created domain, and to declare that among all peoples. For some of us, our audience is in the workplace, it's in the school, it's in the community where we buy and sell. For some of us, he may ask us to go further afield to another part of our world to declare his glory, where people don't have the opportunity often to hear his saving message and his, see his radical power through Christ. But wherever he leads you, are you prepared today to declare his glory? to declare marvelous works that he's doing now as well as in history? Are we declaring his reign through our own lives and our confident spirit even in dark days? That's the glory of God that he calls us to declare. And he gives us this privilege uh, to declare his glory among all nations. I appreciate your prayers for us as we seek to do that in Lancaster and we'll certainly be praying for all of you here in Woodstock as uh, this church and all of you advance his kingdom and declare his glory here as well. Let me close in a word of prayer. Oh Lord God, you are the king of glory and we have raised your praises here together today. We want to continue to raise the glory of God before the people that you give us to move among, even this week. Father, throughout this week, would you remind us that you are a glorious God? And would you give us the opportunity to share the marvelous works that you've done, especially in the resurrection of your son with others this week? And I pray that, Lord, we would live as those who live under your rule and who declare your rule uh, through our lives and our words to others. And may you draw many, many like us, to follow you, Lord Jesus, the King of glory, we pray. For the sake of your name, amen.
Please stand and sing with us, You Are God Alone. Almighty God, we have lifted our hearts to you here in this place afresh today. You are unshakable. You are unstoppable. Lord, may we take that confidence with us this week in our lives to declare to others around us, we pray. Commission us as we leave this place. And thank you that we go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We go in the love of our Father we go in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit as we go as your people into the world that you're sending us to this week. Use us, Lord, we ask. We lift your name in Jesus' name. Amen.